gotten so long, I'm actually nervous. Oh my God. It's like, it's all new again. How do I do this? I don't remember. <laughs> so I was at Michael's a few months ago and on display are these. These are the Prim Ergonomic Knitting Needles, Circular Knitting Needles. And I was intrigued. And I was intrigued because of this, this tip. If you look closely, right there, you will see that that is not a pointy knitting needle tip like we're used to seeing. There's a freaking like bulb at the end of this knitting needle. Now Prim calls this a hook end. And I was like, really? Like, really? Then I started looking at the packaging, absolutely intrigued. And I came across information about this cable. This cable is a stainless steel nylon coated cable. Do you know what else is a stainless steel nylon coated cable? The Chia Goo. I was like, oh my gosh, is this an economical alternative to the Chia Goo? And what about these ends? Like, are these ends like usable? Because like, I have my doubts. I had my doubts. So I was very intrigued by this needle and I was like, well, I got a 20% off coupon from Michael's. <laughs> we're gonna just buy it and we're gonna try it out. So if you wanna find out everything I have to share about this very unusual knitting needle, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell, give this video a thumbs up, and let's talk about the Prim Ergonomic Circular Needle. Before we jump into the review, a couple of quick things. One, as always, down in the description box, you will find timestamps to different parts of the video. Also in the description box, you will find a list of materials that I utilize today. Uh, many of these will have affiliate links, um, which will take you to a website where you can do some shopping. And if you make a purchase, then I might earn a small commission and that does help support my channel. Um, so if you utilize one of my affiliate links or you buy me a coffee or you just subscribe, share, thank you so much for supporting my channel. It means so much to me. Now the price of this needle ranges depending on the size that you get from $7.99 to $11.99. I chose to get the 32 inch size seven, four and a half millimeter circular needle. And it retailed at Michael's for $8.99, but I had 20% off coupon. So I did get it for slightly less. Now let's compare that to the Chia Goo needle, which I looked at the size seven, 32 inch on Jimmy Bean's wool. And it was $11.75 plus shipping. Now this, is not an apples to apples comparison because the Prim is a plastic needle, whereas the Chia Goo is a metal needle. So, you know, you expect to spend a little bit more money on a metal needle than you would a plastic needle. That being said, um, the Prim definitely is a little bit more economical than what you would find for the Chia Goo. <laughs> So let's take a look at the box. First of all, it has what, <laughs> they call this a hook tip. Now when I saw this, this tip, I was immediately skeptical about this needle because I like a sharp tapered tip and this needle, that is anything but a sharp tip. So here in the packaging, it says it's hook tips easily pick up and smoothly guide yarn. I was very skeptical. In fact, I was like, I don't like, should I even buy this? Because I just don't think I would ever like this tip. But I was so intrigued. I was like, well, you're not gonna know if you don't try it. So I had to try it. It's like, like, how can you not try this? You may not wanna try this. You might want someone else to, you know, try it for you. And that's why I'm here doing a review. Now, the material that this is made out of is plastic. These are plastic needles. I don't mind plastic needles, personally. They tend to be slower than metal, but I find that they're less grippy than bamboo, definitely less grippy than bamboo. But the advantage to plastic needles is A, they tend to be more economical, and
and B, they are very, very light. And that was one of the first things I noticed when I pulled these needles out of the packaging. They're, it's like holding almost nothing. So if you are someone who likes really light needles, you would probably really like the weight of these needles. Now, looking more closely at the needle, there were some things about the plastic that I found interesting. One is there's actually two different textures of plastic. Here on the end where the cable joins with the tip is this blue plastic and this is very smooth plastic. Um, when I got these needles out, however, there were some plastic, I don't know if you're called burrs, but there was some plastic ridges and they weren't quite smooth. So I did take out my glass uh, fi nail file and I filed them down to make sure it was nice and smooth. So I did have to do that. It's not necessarily an unusual thing to happen when you're dealing with plastic items. But yes, this is smooth. But you get up here to the shaft, to this white part of the needle. This, it is plastic, but it has a bit of texture to it. It's almost a little, feels a little bit like rubber. It's not rubber, it's plastic, but it just has that kind of texture to it which I found interesting. And as soon as I felt that, I was like, well, that's gonna provide a little bit more grip to the yarn, the stitches sliding across the needle than this like slicker blue plastic here on the end. The other thing I noticed right away was that this blue section here, it's not as texturized as the white, but it's not as smooth as this end of the blue needle either. The other thing about this needle, it has this triangular shape. So the shaft of the needle is triangular. I wasn't as intrigued by the triangular shape, frankly, because I have used square needles for a few years now. I really enjoy them. What I found interesting about this is the triangular shape starts here at the joint and it continues up, but right here, about an inch, uh, a little over an inch from the tip of the needle here, it's rounded it back out. With square shaped needles, one of the claims is that the square shape helps you grip the needle more easily. And the square shape goes right up until you get to the taper. But this needle, it stops well before the taper because it starts to taper down here and the triangular sh shape ends there. So there is a good, probably three quarters of an inch bef before the taper that it's rounded. And according to the box, the triangular shape is supposed to help the stitches glide easily across the needle. So I don't think that the triangular shape of this needle tip is meant to help you grip the needle more easily. I think that the ergonomics of the needle is much more in just how light it is. And the fact that plastic needles do have a bit more give to them. One of the things with metal needles that can make it very hard on hands is that metal has no give, right? But plastic needles have a little bit of give to them and they tend to warm up very quickly and those things tend to, from what I've read, help people who might have some sort of hand issue where they're looking for better ergonomics. As for the cable itself, the cable itself, when I took it out of the package, I bent it and turned it and did all of these things just like I would with the Chiagu, and I was shocked shocked. This cable really is as flexible and memory free as my Chia Goo. Like, in fact, now that I'm playing with my Chia Goo like this, I would say that this is just a, this is actually even a little bit more stiff than this is. Now something I did see right there, I got a little bit of bend in the cable um, and it's not really straightening out. That's not something I've ever experienced with my Chia Goo. That crimp happened because my daughter got a hold of this needle and she started playing with it irresponsibly because she's four. But anyway, <laughs> life, life with kids, life with young kids. But having used this, I don't think that crimp in any way uh, would deter 
from the performance of the circular needle. I think it's just something like maybe because this is thinner or more flexible, it just, you can't quite get that crimp out. Hey, Carrie. Hey, what? Notice something. What's that? Uh, you haven't mentioned the join yet. Ah, the join. Let's talk about that. So with circular needles, the join, which is the place where the cable meets the tip. If you have a rough join, if you have a join where the yarn catches, if you have a join where the stitches don't smoothly go from the cable up onto the needle, well, the whole thing is junk, in my opinion. <laughs> um, before I even cast it on stitches to test out this needle, I ran my hand across the cable to the join and immediately went, wah, 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 wah. I can just feel that the join isn't perfectly smooth. Like here in my Chia Goo, I run my finger across and I know that I've reached the join because I go from the nylon plastic up to the metal needle. You can see that the tip just tapers down beautifully onto the cable and it's like a almost seamless join. And you feel it and you're like, the yarn's just not gonna catch on this. That is not the case here. The other thing about this that I've realized just right now the taper is very short meaning that the here i come up to the cable and then i get to the join and it's narrow it's tapered but it gets to the full circumference of the needle tip very quickly there's not a lot of transition whereas with the chia goo right here's the cable it comes up to the needle then you've got about a quarter of an inch where the needle is narrower and then it tapers up to the full circumference of the needle. So there's just a longer transition between the cable up to the full circumference of the needle. So um, I had my concerns about this join before I even cast it on stitches. But you don't know how a needle is going to perform until you cast on some stitches and you start trying it out. So to test the needle, the first thing I did was to cast on some stitches and to work on a flat swatch because the joy of circular needles is that you can work with them both in the round and on flat. And I started with a flat swatch. Um, and I just worked on knitting some stockinette, um, some lace stitches, and really try to just put this knitting needle through its paces and to see if this tip would hold up well doing decreases, doing increases. To my surprise, this needle actually performed really well. I was shocked. Uh, working with a wool yarn, I found that the stitches were coming off the needle very quickly. Yes, it was a little bit slower than my metal needle, you would expect that, but I would say that the speed of the stitches was very akin to my Knitter Pride carbon needles, which are carbon fiber needles with a metal tip. Um, I, they were just faster than I was expecting. Also, the thing that so surprised me was that this bulbous tip, this hook tip from Prim, uh, it was fine. It didn't bother me at all. I was absolutely shocked. 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 I was just expecting it to be very blunt, and it turns out it didn't feel like a blunt needle tip at all to me. But that was just working with stockinette. What would it be like when I started doing some like knit twos together or a center double decrease? What would it be like when I would really have to insert this through a lot of stitches with that would be more akin to lace knitting where you generally want a really sharper tip? It was fine. It was really good. I didn't notice a huge difference between this and working with a lace knitting needle. And I was like, what? 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 Here's what I realized about this bulbous tip. Yes, there is this like very not blunt <laughs> end to it right here, right? Like that's very obvious, but it has this indent that goes down before it bulbs up. And what I realized is that the stitches tend to go down, kind of fall into this little 
indent and stay there. And because this end is so much narrower where the stitch is resting than the rest of the needle, it created an opening, a really nice opening in the stitch for my needle to then go into. I was like shocked. I was so shocked. And I was pleasantly shocked. Like I was like, wow, this is really nice. And I'm really liking the cable. Working on the flat swatch with the cable, I found that turning the work and doing my transition to my next row of stitches went very smoothly. The cable performed just as you would want a steel cable to perform. I was sitting there after knitting the swatch going, maybe I need more of these. <laughs> maybe I need more of these. And as for the join, well, I was knitting a small flat swatch and I wasn't noticing any problems with the join. And my next thing was, wow, I wonder if this would be a really great needle for me to knit with cotton with one of my dishcloth. Like maybe this needle could be a dedicated dishcloth needle because I knit so many dishcloths that I like. It'd be really nice to just have a dedicated needle for that purpose. Don't judge me. Uh, that was a disappointment. I cast it on cotton with this needle and yeah. All that like smooth motion with the wool gliding across it. Oh my God, the cotton stitches just, the needle just grabbed onto the cotton fibers and it was painful. Like it was painful utilizing this needle with cotton. But still, I was definitely looking at these going, these, there might be a place in my knitting stash for needles like these, more needles like these, because they're performing beautifully with this flat swatch and wool yarn. But these are circular needles. You want to be able to knit in the round with circular needles. That is why they were invented. Um, and the biggest test for any circular needle is, does it work well with Magic Loop? So here is the project that I cast it on uh, with this knitting needle to test them out in the round. And the way I did this actually was I knitted this cuff flat, uh, grafted it together so it'd be in the round, then I picked up stitches along the edge, I knitted a little bit of stockinette, and then I went into this lacy pattern. And again, the reason I wanted to do something lacy was to really test out how well they would work with decreases. Because um, decreases, especially when you're doing lace work, is often when you really need a sharper knitting tip to help kind of dig into all the stitches that you're trying to get your needle through. In terms of the laciness, again, it was fine. It's shockingly, shockingly, it was fine. And the cable, I mean, it's a steel cable like the Chiagu. In terms of magic loop, it performed beautifully, the cable itself. It's, it performed just the way I would expect a Chiagu cable to perform when knitting in the round utilizing magic loop. The big downfall of this knitting needle is this join. It's terrible when it comes to a project like this. Let me just go ahead and knit around and you can see how this performs. So you can see here what I mean, like the stitches sort of naturally fall into that little um, recess in the needle and my, need my right needle just very easily goes into both stitches. So that was really nice, pleasant surprise. So here we are at the turn for Magic Loop, because in Magic Loop, you knit half your stitches, you turn the work over, and you adjust your needles accordingly. This is the transition point, if you will. Um, and this is where things can go a little bit screwy at this transition point with Magic Loop, because you do this, and there's this last stitch, right, of their first half of your stitches at the transition point. What happens a lot of times here is that when you go to make your new stitch, you tighten up this and this stitch gets very small. With how I knit, every other knitting needle I've ever used in the round with Magic Loop, even if this stitch got a little tight, um, I generally have not had problems at the transition of getting my stitches 
back up on the needle to knit them. Let me show you what this is like right now with this knitting needle. I'm gonna push these up. And it's stuck. The needle there is just, it's just stuck. That's the only way to describe it. It's stuck. Like, and I kind of have to like come in, pull it out, just kind of like help the stitches up past the join. And it was like that every time I had a transition from one needle to the next in Magic Loop. Um, and it was it's it's very frustrating. <laughs> Like I should at this point have like a rating scale, <laughs> a final rating scale for my projects, and I've decided that I'm going to use the llama scale because uh, I just think llamas are adorable. So uh, I have a scale now, which is like one to five llamas, one being like <clears throat> five being yes llama, yay llamas, right? What of my llama scale rating? or the prim ergonomic needle. Well, you know, here's the thing about it. I'm very torn. Before I cast it on for Magic Loop and worked that little bit of project with the prim needle, I was prepared to say that this was like a four llama needle, like at least a four llama needle. You know, the things that were great about the needle is the tip surprisingly works really well. It it shocks me. It still shocks me. Um, the cable is a really good cable. It's it's just as, if not more flexible than the Chia Goo. It's memory free like the Chia Goo. Um, it performed just as well as the Chia Goo needle cable. And as for the plastic and the material, how grippy it is, like I hated it for cotton. I thought it worked really well for wool. How much you like grippy material is a matter of personal preference, but I wasn't going to knock the needle for being plastic. I thought that the triangular shape of it, it might help the stitches move along more smoothly. Um, I don't think the triangular shape from any other standpoint is a positive or a negative. It didn't bother me. Again, whether you like needles that have like a square or a triangular shape is going to be a matter of personal preference. I will say that the triangular shape of the needle did not bother me whatsoever, probably because my fingers were more positioned towards where everything was rounded. And it's incredibly light. It's a very light needle, which is actually something I really enjoy because I do tend to work mostly with metal needles. Um, I have to say it was kind of nice to have a needle that was much lighter. After doing the flat swatch, I was like going, maybe I'd buy more of these. But then there's the join. <sighs> the join, when I was working flat, was fine. If it's just getting stitches that are well sized that haven't tightened up, the join isn't a problem. Um, if I were knitting, let's say I was knitting with a 16 inch prim circular and I was knitting a hat project, I don't think that join would cause me a problem. I don't think there would be catching. But the truth for me personally is I very rarely am working on 16 inch circular needles for hats. Um, but let's say I was making a sweater in the round. That join probably wouldn't be a problem for me. But for my knitting life, I very often am utilizing things like two circular needles and magic loop. And I need a join where stitches that maybe have tightened up a little bit will still glide up onto the tip very easily. And this needle can't do it. So at the end of the day, I don't wanna say this needle, it's not complete trash, it's not. It actually, it's because this needle isn't just a trash needle that it actually makes me a little bit angry because it's just so close to being a great needle. But because of that join, it's not even an average needle. It's a two. It's a two llama needle for me. Um, and I'm disappointed. I'm really, really disappointed. <laughs> Very disappointed. I had high hopes. After that first swatch test, I had high hopes for this needle. I was like, oh, I might have found something here. But nope, it's disappointing.
That is my review of the Prim Ergonomic Circular Needle. What do you think? What are your thoughts? I would love to know if you tried out the Prim Needle and what your experience with it was because it is such an interesting needle. If you have not tried it, do you think you might want to try it? Um, after this review, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, answer any questions you might have or, you know, just have a conversation. Because <laughs> I do read comments and I do try to respond to them. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below what you think. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful. If so, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your other knitting friends. Liking videos, sharing videos, commenting on videos are all great ways to help support my channel and grow this community. Of course, the best way to support this channel and community is to hit subscribe and the notification bell, which will let you know whenever I upload a new video. That is it for today. I hope that you have a wonderful day, evening, weekend, weeknight, whenever you may be watching this. And as always, happy health and happy crafting. Bye. And that is, I didn't put on my overhead. I don't even know what I'm saying. It's okay. And let's talk about the Prim Ergonomic Circular Needle. Thank you for beeping after I finished. Thank you, I appreciate that. I need to silence like everything. Before we get, what kind of knitting needle? So that's what we're gonna discuss next, which is how does this needle actually perform with knitting? It's one more thing. At the end of the video, uh, if you'd like to continue watching my channel, you will have a couple video suggestions pop up. You can click on one of those videos and spend some more time together. But if you gotta run, I totally get it. Okay, that's it. I'm really done. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>